Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on solve two-step equations. We'll be solving equations and checking equations today. So example A, solve the equation, check your solution. We are looking to solve for our variable x. So the first thing we need to do is to move this plus 2 over to the other side of the equation. Now the opposite of a plus 2 is a minus 2. So if I subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, this plus 2 minus 2 cancels out, and I'm left with 3x equals 20 minus 2 is 18. Next, if I divide by 3 on both sides, 3 divided by 3 is 1, thus canceling out, x is going to equal 6. So x equals 6 should be my solution to this equation. Now for my check step, we always start by rewriting the original equation. 3x plus 2 equals 20. Next, substitute in what you think your answer is, 6, for x. So 3 times 6 plus 2 should equal 20. Well, 3 times 6 is 18 plus 2 should equal 20. And sure enough, 18 plus 2 is 20. And 20 equals 20. So our answer is x equals 6. Next in example B, we have 5 plus 2n equals negative 1. It really is crucial to identify our variable because the first step is to move this 5 from the left side to the right. So if I subtract 5 from both sides, 5 minus 5 is 0 and cancels out. So I'm left with a positive 2n equals now, if you need to on the side for negative 1 minus 5, if you need to keep change opposite so that you can get the answer of negative 6, go ahead and do that off to the side. But negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. Now, I still need to solve for the n. This is 2 times n, and the opposite of multiplication is division. So if I divide by the 2 on both sides, 2 divided by 2 is 1 and cancels out. n is then going to equal negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So my solution should be negative 3. And if I show my check step, start by rewriting the original equation, 5 plus 2n equals negative 1. Then, substitute in your answer, which was negative 3, in for the n. So 2 times negative 3 should all equal negative 1. Well, simplifying, this is 5 plus 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and that should equal negative 1. And sure enough, 5 plus negative 6 is negative 1 equals negative 1, left side equals the right side, so n does indeed equal negative 3. Example C reads, negative 1 equals 1 half a plus 9. Now our a is over here on the right side of the equation, and the first thing we want to do is move this plus 9. The opposite of addition is subtraction, so if I subtract 9 from the right side, and 9 from the left side. This cancels out here. Negative 1 minus 9 is negative 10 equals 1 half a. Now, since I have 1 half, if I multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 over 1 on both sides, and 2 over 1 is the same thing as just 2, so that 
2 times negative 10 is negative 20. The 1 half and the 2 over 1 canceled out, so negative 20 should equal A. But we won't know until we check. Negative 1 equals 1 half A plus 9. Negative 1 equals 1 half times our answer of negative 20 plus 9. So negative 1 is going to equal half of negative 20 is negative 10 plus 9. And sure enough, negative 1 is going to equal negative 10 plus 9, which is negative 1. So negative 20 equals A. Two-fifths are minus 5 equals 7. We want to solve for our variable R. The opposite of subtraction for the 5 is addition. So if I add this 5 to the left side and to the right side of my equation, minus 5 plus 5 cancels out. We're left with 2 fifths R equals 7 plus 5 is 12. My next step is to multiply by the reciprocal of 2 fifths, which is 5 halves on both sides. And if I just write that 12 as 12 over 1, on the left side this all cancels out and I'm left with r equals, why don't I cross simplify here? 12 divided by 2 and 2 divided by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So now I'm left with 6 times 5 is 30. 1 times 1 is 1. And so r is just 30 over 1, which is also equal to just simply 30. Let's go ahead and check our work by rewriting the original equation. 2 fifths r minus 5 equals 7. Substitute our answer of 30 in for r, and since I'll be multiplying it by a fraction, might as well just write it as 30 over 1, minus 5 equals 7. Then see if you can cross simplify, and we can. For the 5 and the 30, I can divide both by 5 to get 1 and 6. So I'm left with 2 times 6 is 12 over 1, which is just 12, minus 5 should equal 7, and sure enough, 7 does equal 7, left side equals right side, so r equals 30. Example E is when I see the most types of mistakes because our variable P is on the inside here. We have a subtraction, and so it's like, okay, how do I get the P alone? I need to get the P alone. So, we first need to move this 10. Now recognize, this minus is with the 2 thirds P. This 10 is just a positive 10. So how do I move a positive 10? Subtract 10 from the left side and the right side. Oftentimes students will add this because they see a subtraction sign. Remember, the subtraction sign is with the 2 thirds P. I need to get rid of a positive 10, so I'm going to subtract 10. Now, what I'm left with is a negative 2 thirds p equals 52 minus 10 is 42. Next, if I multiply by the reciprocal of negative 2 thirds, which is negative 3 halves on both sides of my equation, this will cancel out nicely here so that I'm just left with p equals before you multiply, look to cross simplify, and I can divide a 2 from 42 and 2 to get 21 and 1. 21 times negative 3 is negative 63 over 1. So P simply equals negative 63. So when I go to check my solution, we start by rewriting the original equation, 10 minus 2 thirds p equals 
52. Then make your substitution in for p, which again, since we're going to be multiplying by a fraction, might as well just write in the negative 63 over 1 should equal 52. Then 10 minus, can we cross simplify? Sure. The 3 and the 63, or negative 63, we can divide by 3. So that 3 divided by 3 is 1, and negative 63 divided by 3 is negative 21. So that as I multiply the 2 times negative 21, this will be 10 minus a negative 42 over 1 should equal 52. Now I know this check step's a little bit longer, but it'll pay off in the end because I will be keeping the 10, changing the subtraction into an addition, and the opposite of negative 42 is a positive 42. And so that should just equal 52, and sure enough, 10 plus 42 is 52, 52 equals 52, so my solution, P equals negative 63. Next, we have negative 19 equals negative 3x plus 2. We need to work to get the x alone, so subtract this 2 from both sides of our equation. Nice canceling here. Negative 19 minus 2 is negative 21 equals negative 3x. Next, divide by negative 3 on both sides. Negative 21 divided by negative 3 is simply 7 equals x. And as I go to check this, rewrite the original equation. Negative 19 equals negative 3x plus 2. Substitute in your 7 for x. Negative 19 should equal whatever negative 3 times 7 is, and that's negative 21 plus 2. Negative 19 equals, well, negative 21 plus 2 is negative 19. So this checks out. 7 is equal to x. And as our two-step equation's whirlwind is about to come to an end, we have n divided by negative 3 minus 2 equals negative 18. Let's go ahead and move this minus 2 from the left to the right by adding 2 to both sides of my equation so that I'm left with n over negative 3 equals negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. Now here, all I need to do is multiply by a negative 3 over 1 because that's the reciprocal of 1 over negative 3. So if I multiply my right side by just negative 3, we have some nice canceling here, so that n is going to equal a positive 48. Is negative 16 times negative 3 is a positive 48. But we do need to check our solution, rewrite the original equation, n divided by negative 3, minus 2 equals negative 18. Substituting your 48 for n, 48 divided by negative 3 minus 2 should equal negative 18. 48 divided by negative 3 is negative 16 minus 2 should equal negative 18. And sure enough, negative 16 minus 2 is negative 18. Negative 18 equals negative 18. So my solution, n equals 48. Lastly, we have solved the equation below to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. 50 degrees Fahrenheit equals how many degrees Celsius? And we'll use the equation F equals 1 and 8 tenths C plus 32. Well, we have to substitute in our 50 for F, so 50 is going to equal 1 and 8 tenths C plus the 32. Well, since we're solving for C, we can move this plus 32 by subtracting 32 from both sides.
we're left with 18 equals 1 and 8 tenths C. Lastly, if we divide by 1 and 8 tenths on both sides, our solution is 10 equals C. And so, 50 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. And that is it for this lesson on Solve Two-Step Equations. Good luck.